Yeah, hello, hello, and welcome to another video. <laughs> video of me plus you is us. My name is Kwame. I'm Elaine. And we're here with another. Yeah, we just said that. Episodes. <laughs> uh, we maybe for people who don't know us, we talk about things. Yeah. In our life. Uh huh. As an interracial. Married couple in Ghana, Accra, and we just got a baby. Yeah, so we're a Dutch Ghanaian couple who just had a baby, and we just share our experiences. Oh, yeah. And uh, just a little bit of context: we got the baby, or we delivered the baby in the Netherlands because I wanted to be close to family and friends in the Netherlands. Uh huh. And we just got back to Ghana into our own house, which you see in the background. Boop boop. Um. <laughs> yeah, so people know this is our house. Okay. I uh, don't think they thought we were recording in the studio. We wish. You want to get a studio? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so in this video, we're going to share um, how it was like for us to fly with our baby to Ghana. And he was six weeks at a time. Six weeks. And we had to fly with yes. him to Ghana. So we're walking you through the process. If you're watching this, you just had a baby. You're about to have a baby. Maybe you're also in our position. You have to fly to another country. Maybe you want to go on holiday with your baby. Good then, idea. Yeah. I then, salute you. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> okay. The first thing is prep all the paperwork. Yeah. The paperwork is very, 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 very important that you have it all beforehand. And depending on the country you're in, a lot or the more, the better. Yeah, so for us, it meant, because we knew we were traveling quite soon after giving birth, yeah. so six weeks after, uh, the baby needs a passport. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you cannot take the baby anywhere else. <laughs> so before the baby was born, I had to plan an appointment at the municipality in the Netherlands to apply for the passport, which felt really weird to plan an appointment for a baby that's not even there yet. Yeah, uh, It feels almost like jinxing it. Yeah. But I mean... Just make sure you prepare ahead of time. And uh, we also, in the end, applied. So we got the Dutch passport quite quickly, within three working days, which was great. Uh, but it was an experience on itself because you have to make a passport picture with a baby. By the time the baby was two weeks old. Yeah. <laughs> and we had to take the baby to the photo store. And I mean, it's a requirement that the baby's eyes must be open. They must not be crying. They must not be sleepy. And yeah. yeah. So you try that with a two-week-old. In the, the end, we managed. So they had like a pillow. So you had to put the baby on the pillow. And then they would uh, retouch the pillow. So it was on Kwame's lap. And luckily, in three times, three shots, the third yeah, shot just, was yeah, the right one. It was one. OK. Those but it was right really on. great that the photographer was very patient. <laughs> yeah, you could tell easy. that he's been he's been like he'd been doing it for years because the level of patience he had was something we yeah. new parents were like, we wish we had that level of patience. Yeah. You know? He was really like okay. Very kind. Very, very calm yeah. as well. So then we were also calm because we're like, okay, he's not rushing us into anything. Yeah, then we got a shot. Yeah. Yeah. So then we, we got the passport picture. And then if you apply for a passport in the Netherlands, you need to bring uh, the individual you're applying for. So we had to bring the baby. We had to yeah. go to another city. Ah, that was a thing. Like to travel with a two-week-old, pack him in the car, pack the food. So we live. We lived uh, about an, about 45 minutes to an hour from... Where we had to apply. Where we had to apply. So we were in Houta and we had to go to The Hague. Yeah. And yeah, we had to drive with a two week old. Luckily for us, he travels very well. He yeah. likes that car motion thing. Yeah. And we even got the opportunity to even spend a little time doing something like self care for ourselves in the city after we applied. Yeah. And and that was that was pretty cool. But yeah, if you don't live close to Yeah. Um where you have to apply for the passport, then you also have to now Rap. for the first time Step travel out. with your baby, yeah. <clears throat> which means that everything um, takes twice as long, and your prep is also uh, twice as detailed. Because if you miss one thing, like you know the pacifier, if you're going to be using that, um, how many diapers, um, extra food, extra, extra clothes. clothes for him, for you. So yeah, it's a lot, but you it's know. good practice because yeah. in the end, I. 
I was more confident because we had stepped out a few times before we were going heading yeah. to the airport. So it also helps you to already get into that flow of okay, we're stepping out. This is what we need. And so, also, and yeah. also, it helps you know how your baby is when they're outside, how the, your baby yeah. travels, how That's your baby true. is in public, the noise. You know, are they so, fussy? Yeah. Do they sleep? You know, so yeah, it no, helped nothing us is in vain. So it will also help you. And we we even had to. So what we did in the end was also apply for the Ghanaian passport. Yeah. That one was, was a bit tricky. Tricky because the process wasn't as like uh, smooth. Yes. Um, and it would take longer. The they Ghanaian weren't one. sure when it would be ready. Ready. So yeah. in the end, we applied for and the visa and the passport. Yeah. Which was a bit stressing because I was like, if we don't get it, then. If we don't get the visa or the passport, how are we going to get our child into the country? <laughs> it's yeah, it was, it was it was it was more it was a very uh, time sensitive. Yeah, uh, uh, we had like I'm looking for the weeks. word. Urgent? Uh, no, the the feeling Th- like mm. nerve wracking. I don't know how to. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like you know we were really like sitting on the edge. You know, we hope this thing pulls through so that we can travel with the baby and. Yeah. When we went to apply for the Ghanaian passport as well, we thought that because we had passport pictures and they already looked okay, you know, they yes. also wanted to take their own passport picture at the passport office. But with a Dutch one, you take it somewhere so long as the dimensions match. Yeah. They are okay with it. So they have the background and dimensions. And the Ghanaian passport, um, so this is for those who have like uh, Ghanaian uh, partners, or even if you have uh, a different, if you are also an uh, interracial couple. Make sure if you want to get two passports, you know exactly how um, the other person's process is. So if maybe your country or, for example, her country uh, process took only three days and we literally had to go physically to fill the forms and leave. But with the Ghana one, for example, we filled the forms online, printed Mm -hmm. them out and went to verify them. So it was a two-step process, went to verify them at the Ghanaian embassy and then also had to take the picture again and we're not given a finite or definite date that you're going to pick it up on this day so do find out what the process is for either of you if you want to get a two if you don't want to get the two like we did we 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 pushed ourselves to get the two just because um when we bring him and we are traveling maybe somewhere or for the next time we don't want to do it again because at least it lasts uh five years for when they're younger So if you don't want to do the two, then you know that, okay, fine, you're getting the quickest one and then applying for a visa with the other one if you're going to be traveling. But still look into, like, the process. Yeah, look into the process. Otherwise, their papers are not correct and then you have a problem. Yeah, and, yeah, if if it's by birth, they're allowed to have both. I don't know which countries don't allow uh, dual citizenship and passports, Mm -hmm. but if it's by birth, your child is allowed to have both. And it's good to have that advantage yeah so second thing uh check with the airline because there are certain baby arrangements that can be uh arranged <laughs> so uh for example our airline had like the baby bassinets bassinet. that you can hang on the wall so that you don't have to hold your baby the whole time, time yeah so our flight was six hours which is still doable um but yeah, it was good to know that that's what they can offer. And then you had to make a reservation because it was at the special baby aisle where there's a bit more space for your legs as well. So you can easily get up and down. Mm-hmm. Um, so check out the airline, uh, what they can offer. And also not uh, if you need to change your baby, ask the arrows is like, where can I change my baby? Because not every washroom has like a a folded table so we had to ask like where can we do that but luckily we had very sweet air Air hostesses hostesses they really liked the the baby and they liked our vibe (laughs) they literally came to like we were just because you have a a baby or a small child you can go first into the aircraft aircraft. so we're just literally sitting down as one of the first people and they came running (laughs) checking out the baby and uh, asking how old is he where are you going like all these things and how cute he is everybody was like yeah he's very cute we're in love with how beautiful he looks yeah it was very sweet and it was also nice because karma was first behind me because I, i was in the baby aisle because i had made the reservation for the baby um 
so he was on my ticket kind of and then Kwame was behind me because we weren't able to check in together but then luckily the uh, I explained to the work, arrows yeah. it's like okay this is my husband he's sitting there and then she's like oh, okay we'll try to move you around so you guys are next to each other so that was really great because then you can just kind of take uh, turns with holding him or feeding him or changing him uh, so it was nice that we were next to each other, I think, especially for the first flight. So ask if you can or, uh, yeah, ask if it's possible. Because for us, they moved a few people around and then suddenly... They, 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 yeah, they looked they around really and tried. realized that, okay, um, not all the seats were filled and then they just moved some people around. Yeah. They just politely asked and moved some people around. Yeah. Um, the thing I wanted to draw your attention to for you to remember if you're flying as well is with a bassinet, for example, depending on the flight. So please ask... Because even when you request for, you know, the bassinet and the baby aisle and everything, if you're not the only uh, new mother or only mother traveling on the craft, yeah. then it means that you have to be at the airport very early. Yeah. Because it now first becomes come. a first come, first serve thing. And as yeah. well, um, how young your baby is. So the younger the baby that will require the bassinet versus maybe yeah. an older one that you can maybe handle on your laps the whole flight. So yeah. um, depending on the flight you're using, make sure you're at the airport on time. And again, like I said, everything you plan doubles in time. So if you would go an hour before, now you have to do two hours before because you're putting all the possibilities of what if yeah. into your Just, planning. Yeah, for your own sanity yeah for your own sanity which means that if you're going to go before as well it means you're going to spend longer at the airport and you need to pack more as well so mm -hmm. everything is um everything <laughs> in that sense yeah and i think uh it's also important to check out the airports yeah I was going uh, to oh i don't know go on so um Schiphol Airport uh, in Amsterdam has a baby lounge. Yeah. So there are these small pods kind of with curtains around it where that you can close and then you can feed your baby there, change your baby. They have a whole station with running water, warm water, cold water, microwave, even a bathtub if you need to wash your baby, if you had an accident or if you have a very long travel, I don't know. Yeah. So it was really nice because it was a quiet part of the airport. You could just really sit down, catch your breath, uh, Grandma was able to get me a coffee. We ate a, I think it was a croissant or something. Yeah, we ate croissants. Like and, just yeah. like to wind down a little bit before we went to the gate. Yeah, so that was really good. I enjoyed the and, tinder roach, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and I would also recommend that somebody's bringing you to the airport if possible, like a friend or family, because it's quite stressful already to travel with kids, and. It's nice that you don't have to think of parking or like how I'm going to move all the bags, bags or how this, how that. So that's, yeah. And also somebody who picks you up would also be nice. So you don't have to like now request a Bolt or an Uber or like yeah. hustle with, because yeah, that's too much. You have to arrange both. Yeah. And what I didn't know was at Schiphol, what they do is uh, you can either bring your stroller or your maxi cozy, like the, the car seat. So we had a car seat like the Maxi Cozy, and then what they do is when you get to the gates, that's where you give the Maxi Cozy. To the air hostess or the, yes. or the, or the stroller. Or the stroller. And then when you get out, uh, it will be, uh, it's not in the normal luggage, but in like special luggage, so they put it on the side, side. for you. On the side, yeah. Um, Depending on the airport you're going to or you're arriving yeah. to, they will pack it on the side, and then you just like, go and pick it, and then you go to the carousel for your bags. Yeah, so it's good to also verify that how that works because so our baby was still small yeah. so we it was easy to carry him from the aircraft to uh, wherever we were picking up the car seat but i can imagine if you have a bigger child then maybe the stroller you really need it so prepare also for that from the aircraft to so you get your stroller or your yeah. the car seat back because if if your baby's heavy or something it might be a bit of a struggle yeah and this the Third thing, is it third or fourth? Yeah, third or fourth. Yeah. We lost count. We lost count. Um, also, <laughs> one thing that I realized after we arrived, dress for where you are going. <laughs> yes. I was wearing uh, the wrong clothes or I wore the wrong attire. And I was like, I mean, we're traveling from a cold place. 
to a warm place. Warm and I didn't want to wear, you know, even though we, we were dropped off at the airport and I could have left the jacket with um, uh, Elaine's sister who brought us to the airport, I decided to dress lighter by wearing a thermal shirt underneath my shirt and then wear a T-shirt and just a very light sweater so that I, I am just small, light. And then we arrived in Ghana and I was baking. Hot. I was literally like drenched. Like the sweat was just like, you know, I was baking underneath. So dress appropriately. If you have somebody you go to the airport with and you're wearing your warm clothes, as soon as you enter the airport and you can just dress lighter and give yeah. it out to the person to go, you know, then do that. And yeah. coming to the other airport as well, you have to uh, prepare for a longer, yes. you know, hmm. immigration. Yeah. So for us, it took a little bit longer on the airport. So once we landed, we just waited till the whole plane had left because we were like, we're not going to hustle with the baby in between all these no, other people. That was the first time I've ever... <laughs> Yeah, so we waited until everybody was out, yeah. then walked out. And I know we discussed, like, should I make another bottle? And we're like, no, within two hours, we'll be out. Ha! Huh. We were not <laughs> out by two hours. Yeah, when your and what happened in, was it. that it was very warm at the airport. Like, it was, it was humid. humid. Like a heavy blanket. And, of course, the baby has not experienced that yet. So what happened? The baby started crying or at least fussing a lot. Yeah. Um, and Kwame was able to <laughs> utilize the moment. I used my baby. I used my baby. I was like, hey, okay. Since the baby's crying, we're in this queue. I, because we're traveling for a long time and we would also create content every now and then, I always travel with a gear bag, which is usually my carry-on most of the time. And it's heavy. And then the baby was also strapped in front of me because Elaine wasn't um, as strong to have the baby strapped on her on the baby carrier all the time. So I had the baby in front and my bag behind wearing thermal underneath. And then we're standing in this queue that wouldn't didn't move, move at all <laughs> for such a long time. And then we got to a certain point and I realized that there's an immigration woman who was doing the directing, like, you go, you go, there you go. And then... The baby started fussing just a little, little, little. <laughs> and I had uh, the pacifier yeah. on. Just took the pacifier out and I just whispered to him, cry louder. <laughs> <laughs> cry louder. So he started crying like really loud because now the pacifier is out. He's really uncomfortable. And then the immigration lady just saw it and like, oh, oh, come, come, come. Yes. I was like, yes. So yes. that was nice. Smart Eli. Yes. Yeah, so if you have the opportunity, you can do that Use too. it. <laughs> yeah, and always make extra food. So we should have made that uh, bottle yeah, formula. Yeah, always have food on hand. Uh, I think it's always good to, I don't, unless you're very comfortable breastfeeding in the airplane. So they tell you to let your baby or your child um, latch when you fly up and when you land. Um, with ours, he slept when we flew away, so we didn't have to do anything. But then at some point he had to feed, of course, and I tried to breastfeed. But the chairs are very small and yeah. you need some space. At least to, I to, need to, to put with, your yeah. elbow. And we all, I also wanted to cover myself a little, so I had like a scarf. But then it was very hot for him because we're like super close to each other of course and then the scarf so he started fussing uh so he yeah it worked half <laughs> so it was not enough so luckily we had like two or three uh formulas with us you can always ask for hot water and it's better to have more ready than to like not have it at all on you because we didn't have that when we landed and then he became very fussy at immigration it he was, was hot he was hungry and then in the end i had to breastfeed in the back of the car which was quite challenging because of course i also had a long day uh, and then uh, with accra potholes and with the bumps. The, the bumps and he he latched but it was difficult to keep him like latched because of the how the roads are and it was a whole other thing so it was too much so don't don't like try not to stress yourself and have enough food on you yeah um because that that was a big lesson like we shouldn't do that next time 
if you doubt, just make the bottle. Make yeah. the damn bottle. Yeah. Because always have. Um, you don't. You don't know, especially with a newborn. It's better to have a bit more than uh, not enough. So that that was a big one. Let me see my notes. Mm. You talk about everything. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's. Um, that's our pointers for traveling with, uh, and depending on how old your baby is, um, you may or may not need your headphones, but yeah. the flight headphones for babies, get one. It's better to have it and not need it. Ah, uh, yeah, if they don't like the noise. Yeah, yeah, than to need it and not have one with you, so always get it. Luckily yeah. for us, when we got into the plane, the elves were like, nah, this plane is not as loud, and he's, will be um, fine. what, six weeks at a time, so he'll be fine. Yeah. So. And I think what was also nice was one of the arrows that really wanted to make a picture of us. <laughs> so we have a picture. And that's our thumbnail. Of us in the plane because she's like, yeah, you can show him when he's 18, which I thought was very cute. You see it, you see it on YouTube as well. Yes. It's our thumbnail. That's what yes. you're seeing. So, that, that's us with him. But it was nice. It was nice that she thought of that because, of course, we were not in a headspace to like, oh, let's make memories. <laughs> no, we were not, <laughs> not really. We're just practical all. like, oh, let's get through this flight. Yeah. Um, but it was nice. And. Yeah, like ask for help if you can. Like yeah, get help. People, people are generally very helpful because they see you. You have a small child and they want to support. And yeah, you you, you have people coming up to you as well. Yeah. Like oh, like how old? And is it a boy or a girl? And it, it it's a whole other experience in a nice way. Yeah. Yeah. And also when you see other parents at the airport, you're like whoa. I see you, yeah. you know, you're doing great. Especially those who are traveling with like multiple kids. Like yeah, I don't know how they do it. Two even, and yeah, like one is a toddler and one is a baby and like, whoa. Yeah, and all the stuff and all the entertaining, yeah, you're doing well. <laughs> so give yourself some grace as well when, yeah. during the travel. Especially, we were traveling together, but if you were alone, I can yeah. imagine it's quite a lot. So Don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah. It makes it worse. Yes, and ask for help. I mean, people are generally happy to, to help. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we hope this was insightful. Enough. And so we'll catch you in the next video. This is me plus you is us. And Thank my you name for is watching. Oh. <laughs> His name is Kwame. I'm Elaine. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.